Egbe Apamane Regba. Well, it's also good morning to you, but that was said in Itako. Okay, so it's actually a long day, and um, as um, it was noted, on social media too, because the Federal High Court in Abuja on Wednesday, they stopped the Central Bank of Nigeria, that's CBN, from further releasing the share of the monthly allocation from the Federation account due to River State until a lawful appropriation act is passed by a validly constituted House of Assembly. Well, Justice Joyce Abdul Malik, while issuing the order, held that the presentation of the 2024 budget by the state governor, Sim Fubara, before a four-member Rivers House of Assembly was an affront to the constitutional provision and should not be allowed to stand because he says that um, it's a gross violation of the 1999 constitution that he swore to protect. Well, the judge then restrained CBN, Accountant General of the Federation, Zenith Bank and Access Bank from further allowing Fubara to access money from the consolidated revenue and federation account. Absolutely, it was long and you trust that netizens will make this top on the trend table. So let's bring you in. Peter, in reaction to this, says the River State government can run their local government without recourse to FAC. He says, I want to believe Fubara knows what to do. It shouldn't be a problem. Also, in reaction to this, is Mr. Zah who says this will get to the point where they say no crude oil should leave Port Harcourt. Then we will have Niger Delta militancy all over again. Not going to be nice at this point. More thoughts on this one come from Jacks of the East who says the country became lawless when we started having strong men instead of strong institutions. Final thought would be from Fubara himself who had said that this is a list of his worries right now and then he had shared pictures of the Thanksgiving that they had in the state yesterday with Daddy um, Umokpai there and he just said that they doubted us and looked down on our capability but today River State stands stronger than ever. New leaders are emerging, active projects are ongoing, fiscal achievement are being recorded and salaries are being paid. So when you say today, does it mean that before today all of those things were not in place? People say, oh remember you were also part of that government. What is going on sir? But we'll leave it at that to go to more stories now it will be um, on security. Reactions are trailing the appointment of an acting chief of army staff by the president, Bola Tinubu, Major General Olufemi Oluyede, is to hold sway until the eventual return of the substantive chief of army staff, that's Lieutenant General Tarid Lagbaja, who the army say that he's on his annual leave. Oluyede is 56 year old. He and Lagbaja are cosmate and members of the Tactonic regular course. How did this meet netizens? In reaction, um, Akin today says, why appoint acting chief of army staff when the current chief of army staff was on holiday? Okay. Um, Ecstasy 50 says, why is the army playing politics? They clearly said in their press release, for the record, there is no such appointment in the armed forces of Nigeria that acting appointment is political and unconstitutional. So can we just see the press release right there? You know, it had trended before today that he was, in fact, there were dead rumor really on the space of social media, which was immediately um, debunked. Now they said, uh, or at, at that time, they had sent out a statement when they said that, oh, oh, someone is acting in his capacity. And they said, nothing like that really exists. It is unconstitutional. They do not have that in their policy. And if we could just take the first um, some lines really from the beginning it says the defense headquarters wishes to clarify that it has not announced the appointment of any senior officer as the acting chief of army staff contrary to speculation by certain media outlets it says for the record no such appointment no such appointment exists within the armed forces of nigeria so now that we have that um, appointment that office suddenly exists what is the state of things and this press this statement is being brought out to ask them what is going on if you say that there is no provision for that office now that we have that officer which office is he going to be occupying is does this justify the trends on social media but let's just see 
a reaction to this one um, also from a netizen. So we just feel that, okay, last, last, we go hear the truth. It remains small. We now go talk waiting day. Absolutely. Well, he's on leave. That's what that um, statement says. And people say, okay, it's almost a month that he's been away. If it's not been over a month, we are patiently waiting. Maybe annual leave, how long again? Okay, let's have more stories and maybe a soft one this time. You know that the seven ministerial nominees were expectedly before the Senate for screening on Wednesday. They would of course have to read their credentials and then the floor is open to lawmakers to ask their questions. Well, it shall reach the turn of the nominee of Foreign Affairs for State, who is now um, confirmed, Bianca Ujuku, and then the senator representing Enugu West Senatorial District, Osita Ngo, thought to comment on her beauty, but then he was soon stopped by the Senate President, Goswila Babio, for the fear of social media users, as he noted. Skip actually reflect the truth. We have all listened to her. Nobody can fault her qualification to serve this country in any capacity. Um, she is very intelligent, very, very charismatic, and very beautiful. <laughs> you can see. I asked her to turn uh, down her beauty when she comes to me today. Please re Mr. Restrict, President, restrict your comments to her resume. Her resume? <laughs> it, is there, it is there from because, a beauty uh, pageant. You, you know why I'm saying that? It, was, it is there. Most Senator Ome, Senator Ome, Nigeria. Senator Ome, eh? Senator Ome, restrict yourself to her resume. All okay. right, we'll go. Okay, we'll thank, go you. Into, thank you. We'll go into social media thank, and thank Google. You. I will ask a question. Who touched my Bianca? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, you know too much. Well, sorry, the caution came too late. Social media, here you are. Okay, let's see some soft comment. Um, which strategy says, bunch of unserious people, they left screening and went on to admire beauty. Is that part of their <laughs> oversight function? <laughs> Civilian captain says, well, she's a widow and not just a widow, but a widow to a great man that none of them could be. He says, I guess that's how men in parliament during the days of old looked and admired the wife of solomon when he was no more also in reaction preacher says now orishi rishi did that said it imagine madam why do you look so beautiful were you made on sunday this comment just reminds me of my color you know when you go to the market and that's region friends yeah like, my color my color my color say you are even black save me i yellow am i your color hetty <laughs> says who can Blame him. That woman beauty, beauty is distracting. Absolutely. They quite agree right there. The former beauty queen and maybe always a former beauty queen. And then we have our next story and final one for today, which would be that the U.S. President Joe Biden had on Tuesday placed a call through to his Nigeria counterpart, that's Bola Tunubu. It was to thank him for the release of a U.S. citizen and Binance executive, Tigrin Gembrayan, who was on trial for money laundry and currency speculation at the Federal High Court in Abuja here in Nigeria. Well, he's been released and has returned to the United States. Well, while that's a part of the 30 minutes long call, Biden shares on his ex account that he also condoled with Tunubu over the flood that is ravaging his country, Nigeria. And that is like, uh, uh, where did they up? Why about your own call? So let's just see that post right there after the call. So he shared this picture and he says, Earlier, I spoke with President Tinubu of Nigeria to express my condolences on the flood impacting his country and my appreciation for his leadership in securing the humanitarian release of Tigrain Gebrayahu. He says, um, we also spoke about the value of our partnership. So, um, Tara Twitsin, he says, did you tell him to ignore them the way you've ignored all those impacted by hurricane-related weather here in the United States? Because why would you just call us and be having us pay flood is ravaging our country. Well, Elon Musk, a parody account, if you must know, I'm responding to the President of the United States to put us, it says, why don't you send them 
um, how much is this stuff? One billion dollar, okay, one billion dollars like you did to the Ukraine. And Olubimi says, thank you, President Joe Biden. That's the best president in Africa. O'Shea, President Tinubu, is getting that award right there. And then for Senator Shea Usani, he says, I suggest that next week, our president should also call the U.S. president so that imprisoned Nigerians can com who commit offenses in the U.S. can also be released on humanitarian grounds. What is good for Binance is good for Nigerians in U.S. jails. And this has not really stopped. <laughs>